Let's take a little look at arrays here. So first we have some true-false questions. Every element of an array must have the same data type. That is true. Every element of an array must be an integer. No, that's false. You can have arrays of strings, ranges, basically whatever you want. Uh, just about. Every array index must be an integer. Yes, that one's true. Visual basic arrays can start at index 0. Yes, they can. And they can start at index 1. Yes. Now, suppose I have this declaration in my program. How many elements does this array have? Well, it says it goes from 1 to 10. So there's one array for each of those numbers, 10 numbers, so 10 elements, C. What is the largest index we can have with this array? It's 10, B. And what's the smallest index we can use with this array? Well, that would be 1. And so that's answer B. Okay, here's another example. This one's two-dimensional, and it goes 0 to 5 in both dimensions. So, um, did I ask you? No. Suppose I asked you how many elements this array had. Well, it actually has six rows, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and six columns. So it actually has 36 elements. So watch out for that kind of thing if it starts at 0 instead of 1. Okay, so um, what we have here is a nested loop. And inside the loop, we're setting element j, comma, k to the product of j and k. So after this code executes, what is the value of the element with indices 2 and 3? Well, it's going to be 6 because that's 2 times 3. What about 2D of 1 and 1? Well, it'll be 1 times 1 is 1. And for 0, 0, we'll get 0. Okay, now let's consider this same array. But now I have um, two, two different nested loops, one right after the other. In the first one, I set every element to be 0. And in the second element, um, sorry, in the second nested loop, uh, you have to notice carefully here, the outer loop goes from 0 to 5, so it does something on every row. But the inner loop only, go, inner loop only goes from 0 to j, so that means, um, like in row 0, it only does element 0, 0. In row 1, it does element 0 and 1. In row 2, it does element 0, 1, and 2, and so on. And each of those elements that it does, it sets to 1. So... Now I want to know for each element, indicate whether it is set to 0 or 1 when this code finishes. Well, okay. Um, the first one is 0, 0. So uh, we can just assume after this loop that everything's set to 0. So all we need to do is check in here whether the element is set to 1 because this one comes after. So okay, for element 0, 0, that'll be row 0. And k will go from 0 to 0. So we will set element 0, 0 to the value 1. Now what about element 0, 5? Well, in row 0, k only goes up to 0. It won't go up to 5. So that element will not get set. It remains as 0. So the answer here is 0. And then for this one, 2d of 5 and 0, well, in row 5, um, k is going to go from 0 to 5. So actually, element, every element of row 5 is going to be set to 1. So the answer here is 1. Okay, that's it.